God, you've been good to us. You woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. Oh, I just want to thank you. Thank you for family members. and Thank you for the church family. We thank you for loved ones. You have kept all of us, Lord. If it was not for you, my God, we would have already been consumed by the enemy. But God, thank you for your protection. Thank you for life. Oh, God, you spoke life into our bodies today. And we thank you now. We thank you now. Lord, you just keep blessing us over and over again. The storms have been raging in this area. But, God, you have blessed us. You kept us, oh God. Didn't let the storms take our homes away. And even more important, Lord, you, you didn't let the storms take us away. For there was loss of life in some of these storms. But God, you kept every one of us. And we praise your name right now. We praise you, God, for who you are. We praise you now because you are our Savior. You are our deliverer. You are our hope. Oh, God. We thank you now. Everybody tell him thank you. Come on, open your mouth and tell God thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for what you've done. My God, oh, we just praise you, God. We magnify you. Hallelujah. 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 We give you the glory. We give you the praises. The praises belong to you. The honor is yours. Just have your way, God. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. In our souls. Have your way, Lord Jesus. In this place. Move by your spirit. Move in this house, God. Hallelujah. Move in this place. For we need a touch, God. We need a blessing. Bless our souls. Sit on your blessings. Sit on your touch, Lord. Touch us again, God. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. In my soul. Have your way, Lord. In my life. Lead us, Lord, and guide us. We need your leading. We need your guidance. Come, Lord Jesus, into our souls. Come, Lord Jesus, into this place. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord, everybody. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. We thank you now. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for what you've done, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your blessings flow here. Let your blessings be in this place. Oh, God. Let every person that has come. Lord, let them be blessed. Let every person that has come. Let them go home another way. Let them go home blessed. Let them go home delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. I know, Lord, that you honor our presence. You honor us coming here, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Let the young people be blessed. Lord, that are coming to these Bible studies. Touch their minds. Touch their hearts, Lord. And save, Lord. Save, Lord Jesus. Save, Lord. Deliver from sin. Break the yokes. Destroy the yokes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Destroy the works of the enemy. The power of Satan. Yes, Lord. Let it be cast out. Yes, Lord. Make it take his hands off. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Heal, Lord. Those of the sick. By your stripes, we are healed. We are delivered. Lord, let that word sink into our spirits. By your stripes. We are healed. We are delivered. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I believe your word, God. I believe your word. I trust you, God, as my healer. I trust you, God, as my deliverer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I'm praying that you give complete deliverance to Sister Yolanda Laws. Lord, she came here tonight. Don't let, her, don't let her feel bad in her body, Lord. But by your stripes, we claim healing there. In the name of Jesus, look on Sister Marilyn Laws. Touch her now, God. Raise her up, Lord. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. Lord, I believe, I believe, Lord, in your healing power, your deliverance now, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, God, there are others who may be sick, and I don't even know now, but I pray for their deliverance, make whole, Lord, somebody said, make whole, Lord, come on, help me to pray by saying, Lord, make whole, Make whole, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal the mind, Lord, the emotional being. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's under stress, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody, Lord, is under the, the attack. Even in the mind. There's a battle in the mind. I pray for deliverance. I pray for the healing of our minds. The healing of our emotions. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our deliverer. Jesus, you're the one that makes whole. Touch right now. Touch right now. We bind, we bind, oh God. Spirit of depression. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. Loose here, Satan. Loose here. Oh, you spirit. You spirit of depression. Spirit of anxiety. We bind you now. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of suicide. You must go. Take your hands off now. In the name of Jesus, I speak life here. I speak life here. I speak life here. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. And I'm looking to you, God, to touch tonight, to touch tonight, to deliver. Victory belongs to you. Victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You're such an awesome God. 
Yes, you are. You're such a wonderful God. Oh, God. Take us higher, Lord. Take this church to another level. Another level in you. Lord, I want to see little of that. Being prosperous. I want to see little of that. To go up, Lord. Bless this church, Lord. Take us to another level. In you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody tell him thank you. Come on, I need everybody to tell him thank you. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Come on, lift your hand and tell him thank you. Out of your soul, tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Let your blessings come. Let your blessings come. Let your blessings be upon your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh, Lord. We seek you. We seek your will. We seek your way. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Say, Lord. Say the lost Lord. We've been praying, Lord. We've been praying for family members. We've been praying, Lord, for the young people. Oh God. The children and in our families. We've been praying, oh God, that you were saved. Soften the heart, Lord. That the word may penetrate. That the word may bring about deliverance. That the word may bring about a change. My my God, my deliverer. Thank you, thank you. Oh Lord, we 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 thank you. We thank you now. We praise you. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, everybody, tell him yes, Lord. Come on, everybody, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes, Lord. My soul, my soul. My soul said yes. My soul said yes. My soul said yes. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, saints. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Out of your soul, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Hallelujah. My soul love you. My soul love you. My soul love you. Hallelujah. Open our understanding, Lord. We have come here this evening to be a part of Bible study. Let the word be taught. Lord, let the word be taught. And let us have, Lord, a proper understanding. But God, we want to do better. We want to be a better people. We want to be better saints. Yes, we do, God. Lord, we just want to do better. So we seek you tonight in this prayer. Lord, that we can be a better people. That we can be a better church. In the name of Jesus, we love you, God. We love your word. We love that way. Hallelujah. Come on and stand, everybody. Come on and stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we go into the Bible study, there are times that the Lord give it to me to have you to come to the altar, to lay hands even. And I, I feel led to do that tonight. Come on to the altar just for a few minutes. Not gonna be long. We're gonna start Bible study in just a minute. Hallelujah. But I want to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. Come on, come quickly, come quickly. The altar is a good place to be. Sure is. Amen. Amen. I said the altar is a good place to be. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, and some of you heard me say this before, in the Old Testament, before Jesus died on the cross, they brought sacrifices to an altar. And it was an altar where a fire was kindled. 
and the animal was brought, was brought there to, to, uh, to be slain and to be burned. Yes. Something had to die at the altar. Yes. Amen. Amen. And it was done to please the Lord at that time until the sacrifice of Jesus. Now Jesus had, has come. He's, he has been the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't bring goats and pigeons and sheep to the altar any longer. But this Bible does know that we are a living sacrifice. But yet something has to die. And guess what has to die? It has to be us. You are your greatest enemy. Did you hear what I said? Self. Self. You are your greatest enemy. And we cannot deal with ourselves on our own. It takes the power of God. Amen. It takes the power of God that we bring this body under subjection. That we can be obedient to we are obedient to his word. Yes, and so we come to the altar that God does not work on us. We come to the altar that, that God will, will help us. Help us to die. I'm not talking about a physical death. But I'm talking about self dying. Yes, where the yes. spirit of God can have control in our lives. Yes. Can we pray for just a few minutes? Yes, Dear God, we are on the altar tonight. We're here, Lord, before your presence. Yes, Lord. We come here, Lord, to the altar because every one of us needs help, Lord. Every one of us needs a touch. Every one of us needs you to lay your hands on us, God. Why don't you pray to Lord, lay your hands on me. Oh, Jesus. Lay your hands on me, Lord, for you know what I need. Lord, you know me. You know my mind, Lord. You know my attitude. You know my thoughts. And God, I come to the altar because I want to have the mind of Christ. I come to the altar, Lord, because I want you to be in charge of my life. Help me, Lord. Come on, tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, tell him, help me, Lord. I need your help, God. I need you, Lord. Come on, tell him, I need you, Lord. I need you in my life. I need you, Lord, that I may live a life that is pleasing to you. I need you, Lord, that I may draw closer to you. Hallelujah. I really want to please you. Yes, Lord. I really want to please you. Yes, Lord. So I'm saying yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, everybody, tell him yes, Lord. Come on, everybody, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Touch me now, Lord. Touch me now, Lord, while I pray. Touch my mind, Lord. Touch my heart, God. I need you, Lord. I need a blessing. I need you, Lord. I need a touch. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Higher. Fix it, Lord. You see the need in the light. You know what she's been crying out to you for. Oh, Jesus. Sin on deliverance. Sin on deliverance here. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Fix it now, Lord. She's seeking you, Lord. She's crying out to you, Lord. Open the doors of heaven. The windows of heaven. And let your blessing be poured out. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Come on, everybody. Tell them, have your way. Lord, have your way. My God, have your way here. All the higher. Even higher. Touch her now, God. Touch now. In the name of Jesus. Give direction, Lord. Give guidance, Lord. Let her know, God, how important she is in your sight. Oh, God. Important to the kingdom. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Look on God. And touch your God. You see God. 
You see where she is. Help her now, Lord. Help her now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Grant her, oh God. Her desires, Lord. The prayers, Lord. According to your will. Look on these young men. And touch them now, Lord. Let them be strong, young men. In the church, Lord. In your will, Lord. I thank you, God, for keeping them, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for blessing them, God. Help them, Lord, to cry out the more. Help them, Lord, to seek your will, to seek your way. Let them be strong, young men, strong and mighty in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you tell them thank you? Open your mouth, everybody, and tell God thank you. If you begin to pray here and put your mind on Jesus, he will touch, he will bless, have your way. Oh, have your way. Have your way here, God. Bless the Lord. Touch the Lord. You know what you need. You know all about it. Thy Satan. He comes to trouble. He comes to trouble the mind. But bind it now, God. The blood of Jesus against you now. In the name of Jesus. The blood, the blood. The blood of Jesus may call. The blood of Jesus may call. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll obey. Yes, Lord. I do your will. Yes, Lord. My soul. My soul said yes. My soul. My soul said yes. Hallelujah. Touch right down. Encourage his heart. Encourage his heart. Let him just hold on, Lord. You got a blessing for him. Lord, you got a way just for him. I want you to bless him, Lord. Fill him with your blessings. In the name of Jesus, as he seek you, God, to go higher. As he seek your will, oh, God. Let it be filled in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God, I thank you. You ought to tell it, thank you. You ought to tell it, thank you. Yeah. Oh, God. Lay your hand on her now. Lay your hand on her now. You have what you need. Oh, Jesus. We need. Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. Give her the refresher. Give her the renewal. Give her the renewal, Lord. Thank you, Obahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Give Glory to your name. Touch, Lord. We need a touch here. We need your blessing. Let it be encouraged, Lord. Strengthen the Lord. Strengthen the mind. Strengthen the Lord. Strengthen the body. Yes, Lord. You've done so many wonderful things for Let it be so again. Thank you, Jesus. Touch, Lord. Lay your hand on the Lord. Lay your hand now. Lord, the things that she's wondering about, pondering in her heart, reveal it to her, Lord. Reveal yourself in your own way, Lord. I sense, Lord, that she want more of you. I sense, Lord, that she want to understand your will. Let it be so, Lord. Why don't everybody lift your hands and say, help Come on, just tell him, help me. Don't tell him, help me. I need help, Lord. You see, every one of us need help. Come on, tell him, help, Lord. You see my needs. Help me, Lord. You know my prayers. You know how I'm feeling. 
it, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, I praise you. If I believe you're going to help me, I know you have what I need. And I'm looking to you, God. Touch, Lord. Touch, her, Lord. Touch, her, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I want you to work this thing out. Jesus. The burden that is here. The burden that is here. God, give a relief. Give a relief, Lord. Hey, ah ha 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 ha. Eat up a higher. Eat up a higher. Lift it, Lord. Lift it, Lord. Show yourself strong here. I believe, God, that you will work a wonder even now. That you work a wonder on this altar. That you work a wonder in a life. Oh, Jesus. I want you to fix it now. Oh, Jesus. I want you, God, to grant the request of your servant who is praying now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Show yourself here, Lord. Show yourself strong to this young lady, Lord. I'm trusting you, God. I believe you, Lord. I believe your word. Thank you, thank you. Lay your hand on the Lord. Touch your mind, Lord. I pray for healing. I pray for healing. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood. Blood of Jesus for me. Say that the Lord rebuke you. Your spirit that come to torment. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, and I stand here as your servant. I speak peace into her life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it be so, God. Let let it be so, Lord. Let us see a noticeable change. Let us see it, Lord. Let us feel it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for this young man. Touch him now, God. He's standing here, Lord, with his hands uplifted. Oh, God. Make a way for him, Lord. Oh, God. Bless him now. His understanding, Lord. Let him go to another level. Yes, Lord. Let it go up, Lord. Lord, that he may be all you want him to be. In you, Lord. In your word, in your will. We thank you. Everybody tell him thank you. Come on, everybody tell him thank you. Come on, everybody tell him thank you. We almost finished, but tell God thank you. Come on, you can do that and then tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Look on us now, Lord. And touch, Lord. And bless, Lord. Lay your hand on her, God. Your hand to deliverance. Your hand to heal. Let it be so, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Such a Lord. Lay your hand on a God. Oh God, your servant here. Grant the prayer request according to your will. God, we yet look and believe that the breakthrough is coming. The devil is alive. We wait on you, God. We wait patiently. For we know, God, that the time is coming. The breakthrough is coming. We claim it, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I know it's time to start. This Bible said when he is verified. God got something for you. Yes. Trouble ain't going through. Trouble is right. Trouble is rich. Nobody's talking about it. Hallelujah. And God knows this and how to do this. I won't lay hands with you. And this time I will do the crowd. I mean, really, crowd. I'm going to tell everybody to do it. And just say, Lord, help me. 
Lord. We're going to set it up time. And as we're saying that, I want your faith to go up. I want you to believe you. I want you to trust you. And then we're going to thank you yes. for his deliverance. Yes. And we're going to thank him for bringing victory. It's not how we feel all yes. the time. It's not how we feel. We walk by faith in our sight. Yes, thank you. I see it, but I believe it. Yes, Lord. I don't know what it is, actually. Lord didn't reveal that to me. Yes. But he told me to come pray for you again. Yes. He told me to come lay hands on your knees. Yes. And I believe you receive these words. And this is just God is going to give you the breakthrough that you need. Yes. Yes. You heard the clothes I have. You heard the Lord. Yes. You heard the yes. Lord. Oh as I give an instruction to them now, yes, I want you to work this day out. Yes. Lord, let her go home in peace. Yes. Let her go home delivered. Yes. I want you to fix it just for her. Lord, send your help now. Send your peace. Send your deliverance. Oh, my God. Your deliverance. Oh, my God. Your deliverance is here now. Now, come on, send him help the Lord. That's it. That's it. Tell him help me, Lord. I want everybody to tell him help me, Lord. Tell him again. I want everybody to get loud in the Help me, Lord. You keep telling him. Keep telling him. Keep telling him. Help me, Lord. My God, my God. We're crying out to you. She's crying out to you for help. For your deliverance. Yes, Lord. 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 Do it now. Do it now, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, come on. He's heard and I tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for victory. Oh, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. We thank you. That's it. Tell him thank you. Saints, y'all want to help her tell him thank you. Y'all want to help her tell him thank you. God is delivering right now. The Lord is working out now. Oh God, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You believe the Lord has helped. You believe the Lord has blessed. I want you to look, listen, listen. I, I want you to keep believing. The devil will talk his talk. But when he talks his talk, I have delivered. I have the victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. Hallelujah. You're not going to deceive. You're not going to torment. You're not going to keep it. Now, I have victory. All right? And God is going to be just like, I believe you already. Yes. 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 Everybody lift your hand and just shout glory. glory. Come on, everybody shout glory. glory. Clap your hand and give them a praise. Give them a praise. You can go back to your seat and stay ready for the Bible study. Period. Amen. Oh, I praise God for his blessings. I praise God for his goodness. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ready to be praised. And we thank God for all of you that are here. May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. So glad to see all of you that are here and that are in the house of the Lord. All right.
we're still, well, we're going to probably finish up by the dispensation of promise. That's what we have been dealing with. Um, Sister Lee has stepped out. No, what I wanted to see, I don't think we have any more books now. We can, I don't think we have any more. Sister Lee, do we have any more books? Yes, sir. All right. If you would like to have this book, and it's, a, it's a good book. It's a good book to study. This is what we're using. God's plan for the ages. All right. If you don't have a book, and you like to have one, let us know and we can make another order. Because we still got a ways to go in the book when we complete it. So we can make a uh we can let's go to page 136. 136. Again, if you don't have a book, let us know if, if you'd like to have one and we'll try to get you one here in the next couple of weeks. We have to order it. Because it'll be worth you reading this particular book. Last week, we talked about Isaac, whether it is Abraham, and his sacrifice, or that is God told him to sacrifice Isaac. And we know that it was a test. It was a, it was a test, really, for Isaac. All right? It was a test, really, for Isaac. I'm, I'm sorry. Back, back to you. It was a test for Abraham. Really to show what was in Abraham. Was he willing to go all the way with God, even if it meant to kill his only son, the son of promise, the son he had waited on for really 25 years. He was an old man. He was about 100 years old when, when, when this uh, boy was born. At this point, uh, Abraham could have been anywhere from 115, maybe, to 120, somewhere. And so, uh, you know, it really took something for Abraham, which when you study the word of the Lord, you don't see any hesitation on his part. No hesitation on his part to do what the Lord has commanded him. And, and of course, as he's getting ready to slay his son, he ready to take that knife and plunge it into his heart. The Lord spoke out and told him not to do it. And and what did Abraham see in the thicket? He saw a ram in the thicket of the bushes and got caught in the bushes. He takes that ram and he does what? He takes that ram and he kills a ram as a sacrifice. Now remember he had already told Isaac that God will provide. That uh, really is the name Jehovah Jireh. All right, God will provide. Uh, isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that all during this time, that ram probably was there all along, and what I'm saying, caught in the bushes, and, and Abraham and Isaac didn't didn't know it. Uh, you know, because if an animal get caught in bushes and so, they're gonna be fighting. Uh, and trying to get out, but but all during that time, they did not know that that ram. So God will what? He will provide. That's an important lesson for us tonight. That in whatever we are dealing with, whatever we're going through, we have to know that He is Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide, and He will do just that. Okay, now uh, Abraham is going to. Uh, down the same, I did kind of get into Isaac's two sons on, 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 him, on this page also. Somebody tell me the two sons of Isaac. Who was it? Who, who were? Who? Esau and Jacob. All right, Esau and Jacob. Which one was the oldest? So the promise was supposed to go through Esau. All right. The promise should have gone through Esau. Now, I talked about this a little bit last time. Why didn't the promise go through Esau? Well, uh, he did sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. 
But but that's not really what kept him from getting the birthright. Because uh well go ahead. Let's see what y'all gonna say first. I'm about to say two things. I'm about to say God promised him another thing. He just really his understanding really didn't understand what he had. Who are you talking about now? Esau. Esau, okay. I would say his lack of understanding what he really All right, when you talk about the blessings, what are we talking about, really? The inheritance. Now, uh, Abraham was very wealthy. The Bible tells you that. I think it's in the 12th chapter. Abraham had much cattle, gold, and silver. He had many hired servants. When he dies, all of that inheritance goes to, goes to Isaac. All right? Now, Isaac has two sons. The culture of that day, the culture of the Bible was that the oldest son normally would receive a double portion of the inheritance. Not only that, but the oldest son would become the leader of the family. Now, uh, we can look at it from a financial standpoint, but what about the spiritual side? What was, what, what was important about this inheritance being passed on when you look at it from a spiritual standpoint. Uh, Esau was married to the folks, the folks that were not in the will of God. That's true, but I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get y'all to answer is what was the implication, what was so important spiritually about this about this being passed one generation to the next? You're getting closer. Was he supposed to believe? Well, that'll be tied into the spiritual or tied into being the leader of the family. That's true. Yeah. So you get the teaching, teaching, oh, God, God raised the teacher. You know, the, like I teach my children uh, yeah. how God gives and they teach their children the it's goals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, I think you said about the same thing she said. All of that's true, and he definitely supposed to do it for his children, and he should have been the leader, uh, even for the brother as well, because there's only two of them. However, the point I wanted to make, okay, let me see what you're going to say, sister. Chris Taylor. Um, isn't that the same thing as if the There you go. That's what I'm looking for, because she said, isn't this the same lineage that Jesus came through? Yes, because... He did. But look at this. God chose Abraham to be the father of this nation that the what? The promised redeemer, the Messiah will come through. So are, are you saying that God chose Abraham? Do you understand that part? But I'm a little confused and I know that Sarah was All right, what verse 20 said? What give us, give us a book and a chapter? It says that the boys grew Wait, wait, wait. Up. What 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 uh, chapter? Genesis 25 and 27. 25 and 27. All right, let me let me go there right quick. We, go ahead and read. 25 it says, and 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Okay. A man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tent. And they were saying plain means an upright man. What? Uh -huh. It was already prophesied about that. That the older would serve the younger. Mm -hmm. Now that is a prophecy. But now that scripture there just really tells you the difference in their yeah. character. Yeah. Esau, Esau was a hunter. You know, rough. Jacob was more... But, but you know, Jacob was a deceiver. He, he committed fraud. He, 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 he 
Okay, okay. okay. One, one at a time so we can hear. All right, go ahead, Sister Sharon. Then I'll come back to those if you have something to say. Oh, I'll have to say, both of them, because I'm quite sure Isaac and Rebecca taught them What law? Well, what is the law? No, we have got to do this dispensation of the law. But you can say taught them the ways of God. Okay, that's fine. And Jacob probably, well, he was a deceiver, probably wanted to use this for his own gathering. All right, let me see what the other one's saying. Then, then I'm going to give an answer. Anybody else? Okay. Now, I, I, I know Sister Knight and John were talking about the 12 tribes. And, and that's true. The 12 tribes will come from Jacob. But now here's the thing. If Esau had been right and had done right, let me, let me put it this way. Both of these boys were doing wrong in the beginning. All right? Both of them. Because as somebody pointed out, Jacob, the name Jacob means supplanted, means deceiver. He, he was involved in fraudulent activities, all right? And even though he really tricked his brother, in one sense, out of the birthright, well, I don't even want to say trick at this point, because Esau willingly sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. But later on, when 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 uh, uh, Isaac thought he was getting ready to die, uh, Rebecca, who was the mother, she favored uh, Jacob or Esau. Abraham favorite was Esau. So he had favoritism. Dad going with the older son, mom going with the younger one. And the mother wanted what? Wanted Jacob to get the birthright. Now if you don't understand talking about the birthright, birthright meant that a double portion of inheritance would be passed on to the oldest son. Alright? And so Here's what you need to know. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, let me see that right there, strip it out if you want to read it later on. Uh, he, he says, Hebrews 12 and 16, the Bible says that Esau was a fornicator and a profane person. That's what the Bible says about him. Profane means irreligious, not having any concern about spiritual matters. 12 and 16. All right. So he had no regard for spiritual matters. Even though, as somebody pointed out, we know that Isaac and his wife taught them about the ways of the Lord. You know, uh, when Esau got of age and, and it was time for him to get married, uh, they wanted, because they understood about the birthright, they understood that the blessing was supposed to go through the older son. They wanted him to marry. Uh, a woman that would uh, be closer to their lifestyle. They did not want him to marry Canaanite women. Esau married two Canaanite women. Canaan, the land of Canaan, or the Canaanites were a cursed race. They were very wicked. All right? But he did it anyway. So you can clearly see in the early stages, his heart was not soft toward God in any way. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? And God knew that this would be the case. That's why the prophecy had been given that the younger, that the older would serve the younger one. So can you say that it was already pre, predetermined by God that Isaac would be the one to receive I won't call it predetermined. I will say this, that God knows yeah, he prophesied. The prophecy came because God knows the end from the beginning. Right. You follow what I'm saying? But we have to be careful about predetermined or predestination because God has given every one of us free will. And so here's the thing. Esau did not have to choose the path that he chose. He chose his path. If he had done differently, he would have been in the lineage of Christ. He would have been an ancestor of Christ, but he wasn't. Okay? Now, he was still blessed even when he grew up. Okay? And the reason he was blessed because the blessings of Abraham was upon him. His, his, his seed is going to lead to another nation. His seed would be the Edomites. Alright? And they were 
powerful at different times. And that was because of the blessings of, of, of uh, And the covenant that God had with Abraham. Yes. Now, so the blessing goes on through Jacob. All right? Jacob has 12 sons. And now, something going to be different here with Jacob because where should the birthright go now? Or the blessing go? Who was... I need, I need one of these Bible students to answer this question for me right quick. Who was Jacob's oldest son? Reuben. Did the birthright go through Reuben? Why? I think I know what you're going to say, but that ain't it. That is. Uh, <laughs> he didn't sleep with the wife. There you go. Wife. Yeah, he did. Oh, Reuben was the wife? Yes. Oh, no. Reuben. Reuben. <laughs> Jacob told Reuben, you are as unstable as water. You have no backbone. You, you, you're unstable. Reuben slept with one of his father's wives. Yeah. Jacob actually had four women in his life. He, remember, he married two sisters, Rachel and Leah. But then he also had concubines, those secondary wives, Bilhah and Zippah. So, so he had really four wives, really, even though they, the Bible always referred to two of them. So, and he had children by all four of these women. And so, uh, Reuben slept with one of his wives. So that, that knocked him out of the picture. But then, then you got uh, Simeon, you, you got Levi, you got Judah. Levi and Simeon, the Lord bypassed them because of what they did to uh, those men of, uh, of Shechem. Right? How they destroyed that city. All right. Now, uh, Judah is the fourth son. Let me show you something here. The, when you get to the 12 sons of Jacob, Judah, the fourth son, this is where, this would be the kingly tribe. The kingly tribe. So, you know, the Bible speaks of Jesus coming through what? Judah. He's referred to as the Lion of Judah. Because later on, some hundreds of years later, well, more than 100, about 1,000 years later, you're going to find out that God chose David, a man after his own heart, to become king. And after that, he establishes his uh, dynasty. He establishes the, the throne in David's family. All right? And you go all the way through the, the genealogy. You go from David all the way down to Jesus. You can find the genealogy in St. Luke, also in St. Matthew, you will find that Joseph, now let me, let me explain something to you about Joseph. Joseph was not his real father. He, he, Joseph was his stepfather because the father is the father of Jesus, correct? All right. He, he's a stepfather. He's, a, he's his earthly father. But if you want to look at the genealogy, Joseph is in the genealogy of the royal family. When King Herod was king, Joseph should have been sitting on the throne. Or at least one of Joseph's relatives. But you know, yes. But you know, at that time, at that time, the Roman Empire had taken over. So they were not an independent nation. King Herod was an Aduman. Guess what? The Adumans came from the Edomites. So a relative of Esau was never to be on the throne. Never, all right? But because of the polit politics of the day, because Rome had control of Israel and so forth, and the king did not have complete independence. That's how Herod got to be king. Now, then the question would be, well, you just told me that, that, that Joseph was not his real father, so how did give Jesus access to the throne? Well, you see, the genealogy that's in St. Matthew goes through Joseph, but the genealogy through that's uh, with uh, St. Luke goes through Mary. 
So they still made Jesus qualified to be on the throne. I'm going to say something comical. Okay. I'm sitting here listening, and I thought about my mom. So back in the day, you know, people used to watch soap operas. Mm-hmm. And that's how they got their news from the Dramas in the Bible? Yeah. It's definitely there. Uh-huh. It's definitely there. You, you, you can't miss it. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, you're saying that in Matthew, we find the, the lineage of Jacob. Mm-hmm. Luke, we find the lineage of Mary. Yes. I might have to go back now, Pastor, when you were saying about the same with Jacob. Because this same thing, Matthew 162 says, and Jacob began. Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was conquered. Is that true? Yes. Jacob. Well, that Jacob there is not talking about Jacob back in the Old Testament. Okay. okay. You see, when you talk about Jacob, some of these names, you're going to see that they're repeated because okay. that's a common name in, in, in uh, the uh, ethnic, in that ethnic group. Just like you had other people that were named Jesus. Okay. So those are those are common names. Joseph. Joseph, his earthly father. We got Joseph in the Old Testament. We got other Josephs. All right, any other questions? Any other questions? All right, so I've covered uh quite a bit on 136, 137, talking about Joseph 12 sons. Uh, but I wanted to read something here. Look at the very bottom of 136. Let me read this sentence. It, it, the last two words on page 136 said, it seems there was a lessening of spiritual values from Abraham to Isaac and from Isaac to Jacob, but even more so from Jacob to his 12 sons. Now, I, I looked at that and I highlighted that. Look what they're saying. The spiritual values are decreasing from one generation to the next. Abraham was, was known as the friend of God. He was known to, to talk to God face to face. The, the, the spiritual values decrease when it goes to Isaac. Now, Isaac is one of the patriarchs. Isaac had a relationship with the Lord too, but not as great as Abraham. All right? Of course, Jacob at first was a deceiver. He was a supplanter. He did come into the Nazareth. Or he did become a righteous person, but yet it has decreased again. And when you get to Jacob, and, and get to his 12 sons, it, you definitely see a big decline. Because out of the 12 sons, the, the, the son that had more integrity, more spirituality, will be the 11th son, whose name was Joseph. Now, before I go into Joseph, I want to go to some other scriptures uh, with that same thought. Go to the book of Judges, everybody. Judges chapter 2. I think we need to really look at this because I am concerned, I am really concerned about today's time, this idea of lessening spirituality from one generation to the next. It's happening right now. We know it is happening now. In Judges chapter 2, verse 7, look what it says here. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. Now Joshua, you know, was a godly man. Righteous man, he, was, he succeeded Moses after Moses died. It said the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. So Joshua's generation, all of the elders that were with him, and some of those men outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, that's important too, that he did for Israel. So that generation uh, that was with Joshua, Many of them, uh, or several of them, or some of them at least, they saw when God opened the Red Sea and they crossed over. They saw how God brought them through what? The 40 years of the wilderness. And how God rained manna and, and all kinds of miracles that took place. They saw God roll back the Jordan River like he did the Red Sea. They saw the walls of Jericho come crashing down. And all the victories that God gave them in those battles. There were 32 battles that Joshua fought against the enemy. His record was 31 and 1. He only lost one battle. And it was because of 
uh, of one person's disobedience that caused him to lose that battle. All right? So they saw the miracles of God. Now that generation did what? That generation died out. And so what happened? Well, let's keep reading. Uh, and Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of the inheritance of, well, this is a long way to go. Probably will mispronounce it. Tim that here is in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill, uh, Gash. And also, all the generations would gather to their father, and they died. And there arose, look at this, look at this, I underline this about that. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam was idol God. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, other gods of the people that were about them, and bowed themselves unto them and evoked the Lord to anger. That generation died out. You got a, a new group that comes along who do not know the Lord. And they forsook the Lord. But I'm looking at something in, in an earlier verse. In verse 7, which said, these elders that were with Joshua, they had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for you. My father and I, we were talking about something a couple of years ago, and he said, he said, I doubt whether many of the younger people of the church now have really, really experienced the move of God that we saw in our churches years ago. When you were a child, when I was quite young. Just like that altar, what else we got around? How we tear that altar? Yes. People was on our knees, crying out to the Lord. And that kind of thing, we were still crying out to the Lord. But we was, we, we was on the altar for like an hour. Yeah. So we could talk about the, the time we spent at the altar. Uh, now, the revival we just had with other moves was the close thing we had recently that was more old fashioned. Back to that, what I'm talking about. But not just, for, for some of you that may not understand what I'm talking about, not just the shout of the crying. We, yeah, that's what I'm going to go to. We saw the miracles of God. Life being restored. People being healed. Died in the church. And the saints gathered around and prayed, and that person was what? Restored. How many times have we seen that lately? And see, those kind of miracles, those kinds of miracles are good for the unbeliever. It's good for the believer, too, because what it does is don't have strength in your faith. But it's good for the unbeliever. To know that the power of God is real. All right. You heard me talk about uh, my niece, Sister Mary Ann, uh, daughter. She's grown now. But the fact that she came, came to church and uh, her neck just kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. Couldn't straighten the neck up. Just, it just kept going. And, and somebody said later on, that was a sign of meningitis. I don't know if it possibly was. But my father stopped the service and the saints gathered around and prayed and God delivered that child in that service. I mean, we all saw it. All right, I've seen some other things. I thought about one of our bishops who talked about the fact that they were in a, in a meeting once and said that this gentleman had this growth on his neck, big, you, you, you know, he couldn't miss it. It could have been cancerous. A lot of times that's what it is. He came for Bishop Mason to lay hands on him. And Bishop Mason told him, said, well, son, what I want you to do is go down and out and just praise God. Praise him for your healing. And that man got happy and got to praise God. The saints got to praise God. And, and this bishop said, right there in the presence of all the saints, they literally saw that growth go down. He was healed in that service. Now God is the same God did as he is now. 
And I'm not saying that God is not healing today. I'm not, I'm not saying that he's not doing miracles. There's some things I know I pray for. And God answered my prayer. God healed in this church. Right here in this church. However, we don't see this as much as we need to see. And it's not that God is changed. It's that we as people have changed. We have to look at our dedication. We have to look at our lifestyle. We have to look at some other things. Our world has become increasingly more evil, more wicked, and it is affecting the church. So then, therefore, we cannot take on the world's philosophy and ideals. Now, you live in this world, you can't eat of this world. Now, let me, let me clarify that. The church is not a cult. We do not teach that you go somewhere and be by yourself and don't have anything to do with nobody, don't have anything to do with your family. No, we don't teach that. that that's not what, what the church is about. You know, some group, they, they get so uh, to the point they go live out in the desert by themselves. That, that's not what the gospel is about. The Lord ain't never told nobody to do that. But he does tell us uh, to separate ourselves. All right? Now, what I mean by, what I mean by separate? Separation is different from segregation. Segregation means you don't have anything to do with people. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. Separating ourselves would be what? That we are not going to be identified with the world. We are not going to run hand in hand with the world. We are not going to be partakers of the world and the stuff that they do. do. I, I'll give an example. Uh, when I was teaching school, I uh, used to teach school in Indianola. So that's about 20 some hours away. And uh, my first year teaching, Young man who who also uh, a teacher. He actually said, "Can I ride? You know, do you mind me riding with you?" He didn't have transportation. Sure, come on, come on, ride with me. And uh, you know, first couple of days, he got to learn who I was. Uh, he noticed, hey, he ain't listening to this world of music. This this music that is ungodly. Y'all do know that a lot of this music is ungodly. Yeah, okay. It is music that God would not be pleased with. I, he knows I wonder. He knows that my language was different. I wasn't using profanity. Wasn't talking about women as he was. Because when he first got it, he said a couple words, said some stuff he shouldn't have said. But he picked up. He picked up things and, and he started apologizing. And he said, Well, I got to watch what I say because you're a good man. And so forth. And I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I, you know, it was about 30 minutes right. I was preaching. I wasn't, I wasn't hollering like a big, big church, but I was preaching. And I would give them the word of the Lord. And so, because he had asked me earlier, he said, hey, can we hang together? You know, can we be around each other? I said, sure. They didn't come to my house? <laughs> sure. And then he said something about me coming to his house. And then, but later on, he said, because he said something about me coming to his house, he had a girlfriend. And he said something about me coming over there. And then he changed. He said, no, I don't want you to come to my house. But my girlfriend ain't going to act right. <laughs> so she's going to be saying and doing, I, I know you ain't a part of that. So no. <laughs> he had respect. See, I would not allow him to draw me into his lifestyle. But I'm drawing him. You follow what I'm saying? And, and I, I did go to his house once or twice. He came to my house a couple of times. But he wasn't quite ready to yield to, to the Lord. I know the Lord was dealing with him. Yeah. I know the Lord was dealing with him. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But I was not going to let him draw me to go to the club. To, to be out there doing other stuff that, you know, a lot of men are doing in the streets. I wasn't going to allow that. And, and, and there's the difference. So he had a tremendous respect for me. He would come to me for advice. He would ask me questions. And I shared. So we had, we had enjoyable moments. We, we talked. 
We played basketball over there with the, with the guy that over there in the gym. We did some things together. So I'm saying this, the, the, the God is not calling you where you don't have, have anything to do with people. You are so, how you gonna draw somebody to the Lord? And you don't show them love, you don't show them compassion. You don't have anything to do with people. That's not what God called you to do. All right, love with love and kindness, am I drawn? And so that's, that's what I mean by uh, separation, but not segregation. You be with people, but you don't let people draw you into what they are doing. Now, here's the thing. If you find yourself being drawn that way, then you have to make an adjustment. You might not be able to go there. For an example, for an example, if the Lord has delivered you from drinking, you had a drinking problem, he delivered you from drinking, and so forth. Now, I wouldn't advise you to start, start hanging around the guys on the street passing the wine bottle, right? Amen. Because that, that's probably one of your weaknesses. Amen. And you could you would become stronger right. as time would go on, but the devil know that God just delivered you from this because this, this thing about salvation, we grow, we get stronger, Strong. So he's going to try his best to pull you back into that lifestyle. So I would advise you to be hanging out like that. No, no, no. You, you got to do some common sense. And you got to hear the voice of the Lord. Because once you become saved, the Lord will speak to you. The Lord will give you warning. You don't need to go here. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. So some things you break off from. But I'm still saying how you ought to conduct yourself around people. And so I got all of that because we're looking at what's happening to the church. What are we doing? I mean, my time already, just about out. We spent a little bit more time on the altar tonight. That's okay because I believe God did something on the altar. But let me say this. What are we doing to help the next generation? Because that's what we're dealing with right now in these scriptures. What are we doing? All right. I heard this on 8.7 today. Uh, the lady said when Ver road race away. Right. She said that there were so many people before our generation, and she was younger than me, and she was saying that they died, you know, before they had an opportunity to see them. But because of their prayer, you know, that decision was overturned. Well, it's overturned partially, not completely. Some states. Yeah, what the Supreme Court did, the Supreme Court said we're going to leave it up to the states. So it could be legal in certain states, and it is legal in some states. I, I heard that on that 88.7 station. I'm trying to do Jesus 24 Okay, good. Here's the thing. And they did pray, and we're glad for improvement. And we have to keep praying so people will, will wake up and see that that's burden. That is against God's word. All right. Now, of course, God forgives whatever sin a person committed. We don't do that and preach that to make anybody feel bad or put anybody down. Because when you don't know any better, you'll do things. Just as all of us have for what you say. But when you come to the knowledge, you do better. And see, and, and then we want, we, we want to use that for example. We have to keep preaching. Because when I was coming up, it was known that God was against that. But somewhere, the church did not continue to preach strongly against that for a period of time. And it just kind of, what, began to rise up. You have to teach, here's the thing, if we're going to have the next generation, we have to teach our children. You got to teach them at home, and you need to bring them to church. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You got to teach them at home, and you need to bring them to church. Amen. I don't know what the power cord is. All right. Uh, these children, I'm so glad to have this large group of children come to Bible study. I'm so glad to see that. And let me say this. You may not know, but this Bible class in Sunday school is making a difference. These children love coming to church. They get the chance to know me. They're talking with me. They're excited about the coming to church. And that's what you need. Because most churches do not have young people. Amen. That's by design of the devil. Amen. All right? So we've got to do better. We've got to teach them. 
If we want to talk about this thing, since this is gay pride, if we want to talk about this thing with homosexuality and lesbian, we have to teach our children what's right. Amen. That's got to be done at home, y'all. The church reinforces it Amen. in teaching, but you got to teach them at home. Amen. Because the idea of now has come up. Now, I want you to look at what happened a few years ago. That, uh, uh, what folks are saying, well, if that's what they want to do, let them do it. You know, I, I, I don't believe in it, but they won't do it, then let them do what they won't do. And the law started changing. All right? And now you got all this other stuff that's come in. And God frowns upon it. That's what. That's why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of perverted sexual sins. The reason He destroyed, it. right? They have to be student led, right? Okay, I hadn't. I hadn't looked at the law lately. Go ahead. Okay, good, good. And, th and that's needed. That's needed in what a lot of us really understand and so forth. Okay, anybody else want to say anything? But the fact is, we have got to teach this generation because uh, if you want to talk about atheism or people not really believe in God or believe what the Bible says, it's the younger generation that is struggling with more and more and more. And then some of the new ideals that they want to bring. Now, I don't have a problem with the church uh, being modern to a point. I mean, this computer here, folks at home, part of Bible study, we got this camera here, folks can, can view. That's modern, you know. I don't have a problem with that. That's a way to share the gospel. When we get ready to, uh, uh, build other sanctuary or we remodel this one we don't change the thing might make it look a little bit more modern there's nothing wrong with that you know that they got the screens and so forth now i don't want to go too far with that because i don't think the church ought to look like a club i don't think the church ought to have all these flashing lights i just don't believe that y'all yeah so but it's all right to have a it's all right to have a more modern look where we had already said that when the praise team said we didn't never get to put the words on the screen. You know, a lot of churches do that. Nothing wrong with that. And some other things you can do. But I, again, I don't think the church ought to look like a club. Amen. I think a church ought to look like a church. Amen. You know, yeah, the church is not in, should not be in the practice of entertainment. If Pastor Ryder invite a gospel comedian on a Sunday morning standing in the pool pit in the time that I was supposed to preach. Y'all know I done lost my mind. But you know some churches have done that and are doing that. They say in order to reach the young people, we got to do something different so we don't have a gospel, gospel comedian that tell jokes. That's not reaching the folk. That's entertainment. There's no power of God. It takes the power of God to break yokes, cause people to get saved. So, so you got so all of that goes back to what we're talking about: this next generation, not knowing the Lord, haven't been taught, and so forth. That's why this, you know, Bible study looks pretty good. Right? That's why we need to be in Bible study. Amen. Teaching has to take place for you to gain something. Okay. I didn't get near as far as I wanted to tonight. And time is just about out, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. Uh, but the next section talks about uh, Joseph's faithfulness. Let me get to a particular point, and we're going to stop here. Joseph's faithfulness. Out of the 12 uh, sons, Joseph was the most faithful. He was the most faithful. So uh, when you look at it because of Joseph's faithfulness, his sons were tremendously blessed. Because, you know, there's not a tribe of Joseph. But instead, you have his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Explain this to me. I can't tell you why. I'm 
like, but if, if, why did this, I never could understand it. Because if it goes to Jacob's son, why did it go to his grandson instead of his son? Well, it did go through his son. But but I know I know I know uh, the the let me, let's let's do it this way. What God decided, and we can't explain all the ways of God in terms of the uh, kings came through the fourth son, that's Judah. God chose the third son, Levi, for the priest. But the in the double portion seen goes to Joseph. Because of his faithfulness. He's the eleventh son. Now why and then I think I kinda understand why God did this too. Because when he went to the promised land, you know, there are twelve tribes. And when he got to the promised land eventually under Joshua, the land was divided between the twelve tribes of Israel. The the land of Canaan. Now Israel never got all the land God promised. That was because of disobedience. But the land they did get the land was divided among what? The tribes of Israel. But remember this, the tribe of Levi, they got no inheritance of land of the tribe. They were priests scattered. They lived throughout Israel. And what they were supposed to do, they were supposed to take care of the temple, temple worship. And all the stuff you had to do at the temple. You see, now I know y'all may think of this church as a temple, but this church is totally different than what went on in that temple. First of all, if we had been back there in terms of the temple, you wouldn't need to sit in the temple. The temple was divided, it was 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 really built in three different was well out stages, three different compartments. The first compartment would have been like that park plot out there. The courtyard. Guess what? You would even be you you couldn't even get to the second part. You would you you could only be in the parking lot if I could use this church as an example. Gentiles as well or just the Jews? The, the Jews. Because the Gentiles, when they start allowing the Gentiles to come, they were they had a separate courtyard called the court of the Gentiles. And then out there in the parking lot, only the men would have been there. You women would have been back further in the courtyard of the women. Hold on. You, you, you too quick. <laughs> now let me explain what I'm saying here right quick. When you would come to the temple, out there with the cards, you had the brazen altar. That's, that's the main altar where you, it had sacrifice for your sins. And that was an ugly place. It smelled. Blood everywhere. All right, but that was out there. Now, the section we in now, the second compartment, the only person that allowed them were the priests and the Levites. Remember, David desired to, to, to be in the temple. He, there was one scripture, but he couldn't. He understood he couldn't go in there. The presence of the Lord was there. He desired to be near the presence of the Lord, but he was not allowed in there by the law. Now, what you talk about is the last apartment, which if you look where that screen is, would be like the veil, which would come all the way down, the most holy place, or the holiest of holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was. All right? And, and that place literally had the presence of God. The priest, only one priest, and that was what? The high priest could go in there once a year. And listen. If he didn't do what God told him to do, if he didn't wear the right clothes, if he did not make a sacrifice as God told him, if when he entered into the presence of the Lord, he would die. And what they did, they tied a rope around his waist, put bells at the end of his, his garments, so that if he died, they could put him out because you couldn't go in there. You couldn't go in there to get him. And you enter in, into that. That's how serious God is. See, y'all may think that's wrong, but God is who he is. God is God. And God had some specific requirements because all this was done before Jesus died on the cross. That's why his presence is so holy until he did not allow his presence to be upon and to mingle with everybody because of sin. Now, once Jesus died 
the veil was ripped, was, was, was said bodily, said, now my presence can go forth. All right? And we can have his presence live here, but not until the death of Jesus on that cross. His presence will be behind the veil. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So, so I was trying to you give an idea of how it was. This church is totally different. The set of a church is totally different than it's not all. I'm trying to see how I got on this. The, 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 you know, they, they had sacrifices every day, y'all. Morning, evening, every day. People, because if you sin against God, you had to bring them an animal. You got, you got about three million folks. I'm thinking about that animal never ran out. Well, you had a lot of animals because you keep thinking about back then, it was an agricultural society. So everybody basically had animals back then. And if you were poor, but well, God had a provision for you too. Because some people couldn't afford that. All down, you could bring turtles, pigeons, as a sacrifice. But the priest's role was vital, and that's why God scattered them throughout all of the territory of Israel. They did not have it in land. That's why he instituted, instituted the tithing system. The tithing system was designed to take care of the needs of the temple, but also to take care of the priests and their family because they did not inherit any land. Now, I'm going so with this. Now, you know, that would mean you got, what, 11 tribes? That's what? That's got land? So what God did, Joseph being the most faithful, instead of having a tribe of Joseph, he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and gave them land. They really had tried to make up the 12 in terms of what? In, 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 in one sense, what you really had, we always say 12 tribes of Israel. Really, they're 13. You never say 13. And it's actually incorrect to say 13 because that 12th tribe was what? Well, two. All right. Half, you know. Ephraim and Manasseh. But now here, here go again. The oldest serving the younger. Because Ephraim was the youngest. But Ephraim became more powerful in terms of the tribe than, than his brother Manasseh. Is it because of their name? Because when Joseph named them, one of them was forgiven? I, 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 I can't answer that. I don't think it's going to be that significant. I, some things you don't know why God did what he did, but God did so. And I think the Bible would give it, that's why he did that. Yes. Say it again. The, the best way to explain priests and Levites, the best way to describe that would be Levites, and this is not the best example, but I think you can see, Levites would maybe in kind of in the role of a deacon today. A deacon. Even though there were no deacons in, that, that level would be under the priest. Right. See, yeah, all of the priests and Levites came through the tribe of Levi, but the priests came from one family of the Levites. And what I mean by that, Levi was a son. He got married, and he had children. And you had what? Grandchildren. When, 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 when uh, Jacob and his sons go into Egypt, there are 70 people that go. So that would be what? The 11, because you know, uh, Joseph was already there. But it would be the 11 sons, their wives, and their children would go down. How many people were down there? 70. Uh, Joseph would make 71. All right. Then he had two sons. So he would say, what, 72, 73. But when you get to the book of Exodus and you get to the time in, uh, when Moses lead them out of Egypt, you got approximately two and a half to three million people. Yeah, but you're looking at generations. See, because Moses comes along probably about 100 years later. They did multiply kind of families. You know, they had big families back then. And so, you know, 
Levi's sons. I their names in them, I think, in the Bible. One of those sons is where the uh, all the priests came from. I think if I remember correctly. But but the Levites came from the other members of the of the tribe of Levi. Now the Levites did a lot of work along with the priests. Or they did a lot of work, but there's something they could not do. So it would be a distinction. All right, other questions? These are good questions. Any other questions? All right. You know, God, he punished quickly back in that time. But now, since we're under grace, I believe God is more long or something. He is. He is. Uh, did y'all hear what she said? She said he punished more quickly back then. And I think what she meant that they saw the wrath of God, you know, that you don't see maybe today. But you remember I preached in a message that what we see today is probably more his passive wrath. Now what I mean by passive wrath? When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and remember one time they rebelled against God, they got to talk and, 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 and just, just say a lot of stuff they had to be. God let poison snakes, he sent poison snakes out there to bite them and kill them. All right? Another time, if you get past the children of the wilderness, when Elisha was, 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 was walking down the road, some youngsters came out there and called him bald head. But they, but they said some other things as an insult against the man of God. And the Bible said two she-bears, female bears, came out and devoured them. So it wasn't just that they called him bald head. They did some other things that, that, that was disrespectful. But when, uh, uh, who was that the sons of, uh, uh, well, one of the priests went to the temple and did wrong. God, he had strange fire. And God, the Bible talked about how God smoked them. Now, you don't see that today because of God's mercy. And that's due to the death of Jesus. But you see, it's passive wrath. What do I mean by passive wrath? Don't you know that Satan desires to kill every one of us? And all God has to do is move his hand back. And Satan is glad to bring you trouble. America is suffering some of his passive wrath because we're turning away from God. I think some of these storms that keep hitting us. Hurricane. Passive wrath. The economy in turmoil. Political division. Look at what we got for this next election. You got Trump. You got Biden. We in bad shape, y'all. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Now, now I know both black folk don't vote Republican. But out of all of them that are running right now, we'd rather see Penske. Because he's conservative with some values that, uh, that the church believe in. And he got more sense than Trump. <laughs> Trump will say anything. Y'all see what I'm saying? But let's look at something. If you want to look at me, y'all know I try to stay from politics. A whole lot, but but look at something. If you want to look between Trump and Biden, Trump said Trump is against abortion, same-sex marriage. Same marriage. It's so bad with Joe Joe Biden right now. Do you all know with the gay pride month, he's out there celebrating on the lawns of the White House, and a trans, like trans uh, man who that did stuff to become a woman and took the shots and, and, and brought some breasts. Do you know he showed his breasts? He did a flash like Janet Jackson? Yes, he did. Open. He opened his shirt. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And they celebrate and have no shame, y'all. So he got pressed on the woman because he's taking the estrogen shots and all of this. Yeah. Yeah, the press secretary. Yeah, the press secretary. She's a lesbian. Yeah, they wanted they make sure they, they, they got that out there. You know. So they had that opening the shirts, you got a woman 
who transitioned to a man, she had hers cut off. So she opened her shirt to tell me she had hers cut off. Biden, Biden know what he's doing because uh, that's most of the votes. Yeah. That's where the votes gonna come from, y'all. That's the vote of the votes. Well, let, let me say this now. The LGBT, yeah. Let me say this to you right quick. The LGBT, and, and I'm over time, so I got to finish so we can hear it go. The LGBT, whatever. <laughs> 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 Let me say this. They are not as numerous as people think. When I preached about this 10 years ago, the, the, that community was about 3 to 5% of the nation. It is wrong, a little bit larger, but I guarantee you it's less than 8% of the nation. Where they are effective is that they got Hollywood and the major businesses to support them. That's why it's on television so much, which is a little deceptive to try to make you think that, that 30, 40, 50 percent of people are doing this or in that type of lifestyle. That's not true. And so look, look, at this, look at this as well. They don't have as much support as they claim to. This country is divided on that issue. There might be more of us in this country who really say it is wrong but a lot of folk will not speak out because of the council culture. A lot of your millionaires, celebrities, I'm gonna give you an example of a person, if you watch him very closely, he's slick with it. Look at, uh, what, what, what kind of you man name? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey does not really support him, he ain't gonna speak out. And when them jokes come up on, on Family View, and something come up, he walk off. He don't make a joke about it. He does not know. He don't want to wow. Right. So he ain't gonna he, he ain't gonna rock that boat because of all that money he making. But just watch it. It's some more of them. They ain't gonna say nothing. They'll fire you. Council culture. See, see, because they got Hollywood in their pocket. They got a lot of the major industries. Now let, let me say this to you right quick. As pastor, I don't tell y'all how to vote. I say y'all ought to pray. But do not vote for a candidate because of their race. Do not vote simply because of their political party. You need to know what these people stand for. Y'all need to know what they stand for. All right. He is. I've always told y'all this. I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. I got a whole lot of issues with both of them. And both of them crooked. I'm going to Oh my God. <laughs> now, here's the thing. And we, we got we got to get ready. We got to get ready to end this discussion. Saints, we got to pray. Amen. Y'all hear what I say? We have got to pray because we're living in a dangerous time. Yes, sir. It is very dangerous. Because since we're talking on this issue and we're talking about the passive wrath of God, God does not tolerate this type of, type of foolishness. Amen. So this is why America is having so many problems because of what we're condoning now. Amen. What we are allowing to take place in this country as a people and as a government is angering God. And so I have a lot of problems with, with these politicians. I just do. I really do. But in the book of Revelation is, is the, the wrath of God. Now, that's his active wrath. Right. Because that's another it's dispensation. Not like, it's See, not like we get by with all this right. crazy. Well, we start talking about the time after the rapture of the church was going to be another dispensation. The church, hey, this is the time of grace. But his grace is going to be pulled back so then. And his wrath is going to really be poured out. All right, let me stop because we, we're over. I think another group is supposed to be rehearsing tonight, so let's let's, let's get rid of brain again. If you have an offer, I don't see sister hang the lead. But if you have an offer that you want to give, traditionally, raise your hand. Can, can you come and just come with receive it? I want to write my check. I can give it to her in a minute. Uh, if you want to give it electronically, you can do so. Those on Facebook and Zoom can do so electronically. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being. Don't forget.
I ask y'all to do something for me tomorrow night, then. House of Prayer begins the revival on tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I plan to go. It's Saturday, I mean, it's Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning. You're welcome to go in those time, but i like for the church to meet me there on tomorrow night. We try in this area, 7 o'clock, we try in this area to support each other for these type of events, and it would be good for us to go. All right, so come on, stand with me. You can still give your offering even after we finish praying and be fine. Dear God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. Thank you for Bible study. Thank you for the people that have come. We thank you for the offering that's been received. Let every person that gave uh, be blessed and every person with the heart to give be blessed likewise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.